Hey, what's going on everybody? Commander Crane here, and we are back with another modern deck tech. So today, we're going to be talking about $50 Mono White Legends in Modern. It's been a long time since we've talked about a modern list, and I'm very excited to share this one with you. So, as always, before we hop into the video, let me know at the end of the deck tech, let me know what you think about the list, what do you like, what do you hate, what would you change, and as always, if there's any suggestions that you have in the comment section below, just let me know, and it will be considered for an upcoming deck tech. So, all right. $50 Mono White Legends. So, pretty much this deck came to me um, a little while ago when the Lord of the Rings set came out. With the, um, spoiler alert, there's a really good enchantment in this deck um, that definitely benefits legendary creatures. So, I'm like, you know, I should build a, you know, a aggressive, like, Mono White deck. And then I was kind of putting the deck together. I'm like, you know what? We can make this $50 no problem. Are there some limitations? Absolutely. But overall, it's a pretty sweet aggro deck. So, we're going to hop into the one drops here. We're playing four Ismara Hanaconda, just a really cool creature in general. I used to play this a lot when I was a newer player. Um, you know, two, two for one. What's not to like about it? We're also playing three Bushi Tenderfoot. Kind of a weird card. So it's a one, one for one. Whenever a creature dealt damage by it is put into a graveyard, flip it. And then it flips into a three, four with double strike and Bushido two which means when it's blocked or becomes blocked, it gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. So a bit of a weird card. Um, I wanted a one-drop legendary creature that did stuff. So it, the front half of it, obviously, the part that comes in is not legendary, but when it transforms, it is legendary. So I'm like, eh, we'll go ahead and count it. Why not? It's just a weird card. I think it'd be fun to play. We're also playing two Hope of Gear of Purse. Um, I'm, pretty good card overall. You know, if your opponent is doing a lot of non-creature shenanigans, obviously you can sacrifice it after you attack and deal damage with it. Just a good card overall. You know, it's a flyer. Why not? It's legendary. It, you know, helps our deck overall because we're mono white legends. Next slide here. We've got three Anafenza Kintree Spirit. Just another good solid 2-2 two, two for two. You know, obviously, it's the legendary matters. That's why, you know, we're, that's why we're playing it, obviously. And, you know, whenever we play more creatures, we bolster one, which means that we make all of our other, at least our smallest creature, a little bit bigger. So, just a great card. Also playing three Daxos, Blessed by the Sun. Um, this card can be really, really hard to answer for our opponent. What's also fantastic is if they're playing an aggressive strategy, the Daxos just takes over the game because we're gaining so much life with all of our creatures, which we do have a decent amount of life gain, unsurprisingly, in our mono-white aggro deck. Weird, right? Um, but yes, Daxos is a very, very powerful card to play. We're also playing four Thalia. Thalia is very budget-friendly now, and of course we're going to be playing four of them. It's absolutely fantastic. Arguably the best creature in the entire deck. So, next we've got um, a couple of our three drops, but we still have another two drop to talk about. We have Tomic, Distinguished Advocates. Just solid rate. It's a 2-3 two, for 2 with flying. Just, just a good card in general, obviously. What's also really cool about the lands of the battlefield, lands of the graveyard can't be targeted spells or abilities, is great. Because, for instance, if our opponent's playing Renin 6, nope, can't bring their lands back. If our opponent's playing like Utopius Brawl, they can't bring that back. Um, just a really good flex card in general. And then, obviously, your opponents can't play land cards from graveyards, which is not super common a lot of the time. But it can actually hate on a decent amount of cards in the format, which is pretty cool. We're also playing three Linden, the Steadfast Queen. Just a solid card in general, obviously. Whenever a white creature you control attacks, you gain one life, which means if we attack with four white creatures, we're gaining four life. Um, just does some pretty silly things. So again, also really good against other aggressive decks. We gain a ton of life with Linden. Uh, rounding out our three drop slot, we're playing Ray Dane, God of the Worthy. It's a 2 3 for 2 and a white flying vigilance. Snow lands your opponent's control under Biff tapped. And then the non creature spells your opponent's cast with CMC 4 greater, costs 2 more to cast. Um, it does train. You can also cast on the other side. It's like a four mana enchantment. Basically, it makes damage dealt by sources cost will deal one less damage. I didn't include the other side because it's not relevant. The reason we're playing it is for the front side. You know, it makes their supreme verdicts cost two more, which is pretty cool. Um, obviously, like if we're playing against Tron, like it makes all their like their their Karns uh, cost two more, which can definitely buy us some time against other decks to help us close out the game, which is pretty sweet. So, very very cool. I also forgot. We do have another three drop that's on our slide, and then we have some four. We have a four drop to talk about. We're playing two Mangara of Karandor. It's a one one for three legendary creature. We tap to remove it and target permanent from the game, so it trades two permanents and it hits any permanent, which is why I decided to include it. They can get rid of your opponent's Merktide Regent, their Ragavan, 
their Tron land, whatever. Whatever we need to get rid of, Mangara can help us get rid of that. We're also playing two Odric, Master Tactician. Uh, Odric's a very unique card. You don't really see this card come up a lot except in Commander. Um, three, four, four, four with First Strike. And when it attacks with three other creatures, uh, at least three other creatures, choose which creatures block this combat and how those creatures block. So... TLDR, we can have our opponent make some really terrible blocks, and from my understanding, we can just also make our team unblockable, because we choose which creatures block, and we can just say, nope, you're not blocking, so, which is pretty sweet, so yeah, Odric, definitely a very cool play, cool card to play, very, very budget-friendly as well. So, we've got one less slide to talk about, it's our non-creatures. We're playing four Flowering of the White Tree, the heart and soul of the deck, one white white enchantment, legendary enchantment, legendary creatures you control get plus two, plus one, and have ward one, and non-legendary creatures also get plus one, plus one. So, Flowering of the White Tree, absolutely fantastic card, I love Flowering of the White Tree, just a great card, obviously our giving our legends plus two, plus one, and ward one is crazy, like at least with Isamar, if we go turn one Isamar, turn two, we play F Flowering of the White Tree, it's a four two with ward one, that's a giant beat stick, and all of our creatures turn into stuff like that, which is just great, so Flowering of the White Tree is definitely the heart and soul of the entire deck. We're also playing four uh, well, sorry, two Brave the Elements, um, great protection spell, great against board stalls, really helps us against Fury, um, just great in general, you know, protects our creatures, but also can finish the game if our opponent has blockers of one specific color. So Brave the Elements, very, very fantastic card. And then rounding out our nine creatures, we're, we're playing four Path to Exile. Path to Exile is very budget friendly now, and that's why we're playing four of them. It gets rid of any creature opponent's playing, whether that's a Murktide, you know, if we need a Path of Ragavan in a pinch, uh, it just does whatever we need to do, gets rid of a Rhino. Um, Path to Exile, absolutely fantastic. All right, so all we've got to do for our main board is talk about our lands. Super simple. We're playing four Sheva Dunes as our only non basic. Um, a lot of our cards do have like double white, triple white, so we are going to take some damage from the Chef of Dunes, but we're also gaining a lot of life too, so it's not really a big issue, but what's great is that late game we're able to sacrifice it and give our creatures plus one plus one, which sometimes, oddly enough, is enough just to just to turn the table for us, you know, to get the lethal. So, Chef of Dunes, absolutely fantastic. And then we're playing 16 planes as the spicy land of the day, for those who are longtime viewers of the channel. I decided to play the Eric Peterson ones from Dominaria Remastered. These are these are great planes. If you don't have some of these, I would I'd highly advise picking them up. Fantastic art. I know I've got a handful of these myself. I love this art. This art is fantastic. So, um, talking about our sideboard here, I did not list any specific cards, but just kind of a general idea. So, sideboarding for the budget deck. So, obviously, we're going to need some graveyard hate, at least for budget. Specifically, our best options are Tormod Script. That's always the best option for budget graveyard hate. You also could play some Soul Guide Lanterns if you'd like, but I personally recommend Tormod Script. And then Artifact Enchantment Removal. So that can be as simple as cards like Disenchant for budget, but I personally like Cathar Commando. Um, it's a 3-1 uh, oh, for 2 with Flash, and then we can tap 1, Sacrifice it. So it's kind of a creature, kind of like a Thrashing Brontodon s cards for those who know what that card does, which is very, very fantastic. And then our last card, or oh, last you know bullet point, is Silver Bullets. Um, so Silver Bullets, I think of cards, for instance, like... Void Mirror is really, really good against, like, Living End. It's really good against Rhinos, good against Tron. Um, uh, I also think of Core Firewalker. It's incredibly good against Burn. Um, then even, like, you could play a card, like, maybe not even Damping Sphere. I wouldn't consider that a Silver Bullet, but it is very, very good in its own right, though. Kind of cards like that. Though That's kind of the general idea. If you're looking for what I'm specifically playing, it's going to be, there's going to be a link in the description below for the deck list if you'd like to check it out. Um, I've kind of got my general sideboard, at least of what I'm currently playing in my list. So if you'd like to check that out, feel free to. So that is the entire deck. I'd like to thank everybody for watching this video. This is the first modern deck we've done in quite some time. I don't typically play a lot of modern anymore, so I don't explore the format too much. But this was very, very fun to do. Let me know in the comment section below. Is there any card that I missed? Is there a new card that come out that I completely forgot about? Just let me know in the comment section below. And like I mentioned, the deck list is in the description if you'd like to check it out for yourself. And on screen, there should be another budget deck that we did recently. It was $50 Demir Dragons. It was a really, really fun deck to do, and you should definitely check that out. I'm Commander Crane. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.